Hello, this is Kinch with Riptide Hosting with a video for 2016 Windows Server 2016 Remote Desktop Server, also known as a terminal server. I'm going to cover some of the new things as well as just some of the standard features in 2016, as well as things to look out for. First of all, how do you log off in 2016? They finally changed it again. You click on the little Windows icon down here and you pass the power button. You pass the next guy and you get right here to your administrator. In this case, account logged in, sign out. So many people will click the red X and leave a disconnected session that can take up resources. It's best also if you have employees who are using the remote desktop server and doing that to go ahead and set a policy where that will end a disconnected session after some time limit, like an hour or two hours or 15 minutes, just to free up resources. Next thing, Windows Defender is included 2016. It has real-time protection. In the past, you would pay extra for your virus protection, which you can still install third-party. But at this point, it's on there for free. Something to think about, though, is will it impact performance? And so far, the verdict's still out if having on that real-time protection is really slowing things down or not. So you may have to have extra resources, extra RAM or CPU if you're running a remote desktop 2016 server with very many users and not having a lot of RAM or resources. All right, let's close that guy off and get to Windows Update. So very interesting here. You have to really look out for, they keep saying they're going to patch this. But right now, you can say, oh, Windows Update, great. That's always going to happen. I want to set when it's going to happen. All you can do is set the hours not to install and download. But to note, it may not actually install. It's like the message is still wrong. But right here, as soon as you say, no, you know what? We're going to work more than 12 hours a day. Let's change that to 5 a.m. Come down, check the checkbox. Bam. Active hours can be set between 1 and 12 hours. Supposedly an update's coming for this. And the point is for most servers, they want administrators to make sure that, hey, I want this patch to happen to reboot the server. Well, remote desktop servers quite often, there isn't somebody just being an administrator per se, logging and checking this. So this is something we're going to pay attention to to see. Can we guarantee this is going to happen? In the past, and something we found out even on these new 2016 is to go into group policy to make changes to set, hey, I only want to install or download during this time of day on this specific day. So for the updates on 2016, definitely something to pay attention to. Is it actually happening? Are those active hours okay for you if you can only have 12 hours? Is it going to disrupt your work if somebody's logged in? And in the past, once again, you would log in, it'd show you a box saying, we're going to update and reboot. And there was like nothing you could do about it. It was going to happen. So that covers 2016 in the current state. All right, when it comes to a remote desktop server, so often people want to jump the gun when they're installing things and not install properly. And it seems like here in 2016, they're kind of hiding the special little link here that you're supposed to install with for a remote desktop server for your programs, applications. That could be a Chrome browser. That could be your Access application or QuickBooks. Do not just install that through a normal EXE install. Since it's a remote desktop server, you need to install it so the server knows, hey, this should be available for all the users that have accounts on the server to show up. So here we are in Control Panel. Big key here is to have category selected. If you have large and small icons, you're not going to get to see how to do this. So we're selecting programs down here to install a new program. And here's the key. This link right here, install application on remote desktop. At that point, you're going to browse out to your install file anyway. That's the one difference. Don't do a normal install and just click on it. You need to come into the control panel, programs, and click right here, install applications on remote desktop. And just to let people know some of the standard features that have been around for quite a while, when it comes to sharing drives, instead of setting up FTP or how do I get my files to and from the server, as long as you have your printers and your drive shared out, you'll notice right here, this PC underneath here, that's the hard drive of this local laptop. And here's the hard drive of the server. I can drag and drop, I can copy and paste, files as if these two computers are combined. They just have two different hard drives, but you can see them both here. So if your employees have an Excel file they need to download, they can copy and paste it. They can scroll through to the folder they want to copy it to and do it that way. You could also restrict this if you really want to. And this is without a domain. Most of the small businesses we set up do not require a domain to have this functionality to even restrict access and such. So this is a very simple install right here just to show you how it works and honestly for most people no domain 
is necessary. And to share out those printers and hard drives, when you pull up your remote desktop connection, before you log in, you click down here on show options. And this is where you can do everything from set your display size, large, small, how many pixels you want to show, the color, even if you have more than one screen you want to use. But right down here, do I want to share out my clipboard to copy and paste? Do I want to share my printers? And then for the hard drives, right down here. In this case, I'm sharing out the C colon so you would see that right over here. That is the key. And once again, that's the power of remote desktop servers. Your printer is automatically shared as long as you check that box, as well as your hard drives. You have the power to share. As for what we offer at Riptide Hosting, we have pricing calculators online, and we have quite a bit of information. So you can come down here and select, in this case, a virtual server. How many CPUs? What would the price be? Come down and say, I would like a 2016, because I just saw it. It looks great. How many users do you have? I have two. I have four. I have eight. Do you need Office? Do you not? Do you want security installed? Server backups. You can pick this. The next page is get your information. We would then send a quote to you, make sure it matches what you'd like, have a phone call with you, answer any questions, and we can get these servers out to you rather quickly. So any questions, definitely give us a call, shoot us an email, let us know. Again, this is Kinch at Riptide Hosting. Let us know if you have any questions. Thanks.